All right, just a quick video to go through a few adjustments on a Mercedes injector pump. This is the back of the pump. This is the governor. I've obviously got it out of the car, so it's quite easy to show you what is what. So uh, up the top is your idle adjustment. Uh, I think it, you back it out and you end up getting a lower idle. Uh, inside here is your um, throttle hard stop, so the lever, how far the lever comes back. Um, this spring system here, you shouldn't really have to adjust all this. This whole section at the top is actually for um, the electronic idle raise system, which basically if your air conditioner comes on, if it's in cold start, it'll lift the idle uh, of the pump. I never actually use this on mine. So, governor spring. Uh, this is the amount of tension that is on the governor itself. If you don't have enough tension, uh, you'll get what they call run on and it will just idle and just uh, from idle just go to flat out and won't come back or it returns really slowly. If you have this wound up too much, you'll get a problem where you won't get uh, much throttle at all. You'll push your foot down as hard as you want, but you'll only get you know 10 or 20, maybe 30 percent throttle. Okay, so from there you've got the torque capsule. So the torque capsule actually adjusts at what point um, the fly weights and the governor spring push against and how strong they push against the throttle. Down the bottom is your full rack travel. So this limits the total amount of fuel output. Um, if you have a non-turbo, you've got to be careful with this because uh, winding this up too much will result in overfueling. Okay, now going on to the injector pump itself. So, uh, in here we have the flyweights. Uh, basically, this turns on the cam sh on the shaft of the main injector pump, which runs all the way through it, and that goes into the front of your cam gear um, timing chain system. So, as this, imagine that as the engine turns, the force wants to push these flyweights out. That in turn pushes this governor system backwards. So this pushes the governor backwards. So what that does is limits the amount of fuel. So basically under zero load you will only get a smaller percentage of maximum rack travel. Under full load you will get full fuel. The idea of this is to taper the amount of fuel that goes to the injector pump at high RPMs and when it's just not needed to reduce uh, smoke and high exhaust gas temperatures. Right, so now you understand a little bit how this works. Flyweights push the governor backwards. The governor then pushes the torque capsule backwards, which the torque capsule is in there. So, if you have the torque capsule all the way back, the governor won't, oh, sorry, the flyweights won't be able to push the governor back and return the uh, injector pump to idle. So what will happen is you'll have a really fast car, but it'll only go up in revs. It won't return. So that's what they call run-on in diesels, where uh, it's too aggressively tuned and the flyweights can't actually return the rack to zero. So in that sort of a sense, this is a rack here in the side of the injector pump. And what happens is when you put your foot down, the rack travels forward and it increases fuel. So you won't probably see this ever because when it's running, it'll have oil running through it and it'll be spewing out everywhere. But basically, as you put your foot down, it will push forward. Um, and that's how you get more power out of the engine. Okay, think of it this way. The centrifugal force of the pump turns the flyweights. The flyweights in turn push the governor backwards, which limits rack travel. So if you are already traveling quite quickly, or the higher you get up in the RPM, the more it will actually bring the rack backwards. So if you watch any videos, especially like the diesel Mikan videos, you'll see when the pump is at low RPM, it's on flat out, and then it actually starts to taper backwards like so. That's due to volumetric efficiency. So, when the car is under maximum load, you put your foot down, you will have maximum rack travel, depending on how the government is set. When the car is under no load, you will have less, you know, rack travel and less fuel. So, 
flyweights push against the governor, which then, in turn, depending on how is it how it is tuned, pushes against the torque capsule, and then limits your uh, uh, total fuel. Okay, now before I show you how to adjust your full rack travel, there is one little thing you might need to look at. On the inside of the injector pump, there is a small bolt that sits here. It's, it looks like a short version of one of these. So that screw is in there. And basically what that does is limits the amount of throttle that you can deliver. Like so. What you want to do is just take that out. Leave it out. Oil won't come through there, it's just a solid hole. And you'll get more throttle travel. Okay, so now you understand how the governor limits the fuel delivered by the rack. Here is a little trick to adjust the full rack travel. What I've done on the other side is I have put the throttle to full throttle. You can use a screwdriver to do this. Then uh, you'll see this is the stationary full throttle position of the rack. So if I use my fingers to simulate what the flyweights will do, they will push it backwards, then your foot will push it forwards. So, to adjust the full rack travel, what you'll need is a screwdriver and the bottom screw in here. So that's what I've showed earlier. Now, if I wind this out, you can see the rack travel forward further and further. That is setting your maximum rack travel. There will be a point where it stops, it won't go any further. If you adjust further than that, all it's going to do is put your injector pump out of whack and make things really difficult for you. There is another point that will stop you, and that is when the screw actually exceeds past the body of the injector pump. You will get a little bit past it, but not all the way past. Okay, so now you have adjusted your full rack travel, which is down here. You'll need to lock it off, um, like so, with a 10mm socket. The next thing you'll need to adjust is your torque capsule, which is this one in the middle here. On the outside it's a 19mm, and then after that you should be able to just wind it in and out with your fingers. So what I would suggest you'll need to do, that's it there, is the further in you wind it in, the more effect the governor the sorry the flyweights have versus the governor so because you've now got further rack travel they all affect each other these three so you'll probably have to wind this further in like so to allow for the extra rack travel that you now have the only way that I've found to tune this is to actually have the injector pump running and have the back of it off and you'll have oil spewing out the back of this at idle. It is a little bit difficult to get the idle right once you have moved this full rack travel. You might find you have to wind this back here until your idle returns to somewhat normal. Put all the covers back on, put them all back on, do them all up, then set your idle again so the car idles like normal then you'll have to take the back cover off make sure there's plenty of oil in the car uh, and it's going to spew out everywhere you're probably going to lose a couple of liters in a couple of minutes so basically the way that i did it was you, there'll be tension against this you rev the car and keep winding this back out so the further you wind this back out the less the flyweights are active on the rack. Now, when it's too tight, you will rev the car and it won't rev very much. It'll probably get to 1500 revs. When this is too loose, you'll rev it and it won't return to idle or it will return really slowly. So it's a bit of a fine act between slight revs, turn, test, slight revs, and you'll eventually get to a point where it'll rev and return at the same rate or might rev quicker and return slower. Um, some of the bad results I've had might be 30 seconds return back from 3000 RPM.